Hello everyone and welcome to this nine day novena retreat to the Holy Spirit. We're so thankful that you've joined mm -hmm. us people from all over the world. Uh, my name is Ken. This is my best friend and wife. Janelle. <laughs> that catch you by surprise? Yeah, I always just find your intros funny. <laughs> but it's all true. <laughs> You're my best friend and my wife. <laughs> Allow us to introduce ourselves to you. Uh, we live in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada. I'm a full-time Catholic speaker. Uh, and this is one way that we serve people online. So that's a little bit about me. Janelle, any details you want to? Well, we have been married officially now for 11 years. And we're expecting baby number six at the beginning of July. And uh, life is super full and super beautiful. Yes. Yep. It is. Mm -hmm. And we want to thank you for joining us. Thank you for your time. And we want to honor your time. And so this format of this novena is going to go like this. We're going to give a reflection about a topic of the Holy Spirit. And the last part will be a prayer then to the Holy Spirit. And that's what you can expect over these next nine days. Day number one is unique because we're just generally talking about the Holy Spirit and who the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit is. Did you want me to take it off here or should you want to say anything? Sure. Well, I'll just mention one little thing. I just sure. remember, because um, I think a lot of the time people associate the Holy Spirit with the the sacrament of confirmation and I think back to my my confirmation when I was in grade six and the next morning our teacher asked us if any of us felt any different and I remember particularly answering her by saying yes I did and I remember that moment it was like a kind of a a turning moment not that I noticed that my my behaviors or my attitudes were different but there was just something different and 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 I'm very grateful because I feel like God began a a deep work in my life at the moment of my confirmation. Beautiful, because the Holy Spirit is the difference maker. <laughs> and mm -hmm. he's the one that can bloom into life our relationship with God. So who is the Holy Spirit? Because sometimes we can struggle with relating to the, this person of the Trinity, because we have an image, let's say, of God the Father, because we have earthly fathers. We can relate to Jesus because, well, we have crucifixes and images and, mm -hmm. and paintings. But the Holy Spirit, who is he? Let's say he's more than a dove. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so really quickly, the Holy Spirit is a third person of the Trinity. When the, God the Father and God the Son love each other, the church teaches that coming forth from them is a whole other person, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit. And when we think about God the Father, we attribute a characteristic of creator mm -hmm. to God the Father. When we think about God the Son, we think about Jesus as Redeemer. When we think about and recall the Holy Spirit, we attribute the characteristic to Him or the action of the Holy Spirit to this as the sanctifier. So He is the one that dwells within the church who wants to dwell within our hearts to make us holy. So, um, with that said, do we have the Holy Spirit within our lives? I, I, oftentimes when I'm speaking to young people, I do this analogy, and I thought I'd do it with you quickly, just, just to kind of set the groundwork so we understand. But when we're born into the world, we're born empty, <laughs> like a cup that has nothing in it. So this would be symbolizing this of somebody who might is just born, and we call this state of empty, original sin. So a person is born without the life of God. And at baptism, something remarkable happens. We become mm -hmm. a member of the church. But what happens is the Holy Spirit, by grace, comes to dwell within the soul. So the state of empty all of a sudden becomes filled. Or in other words, original sin is washed away. And a miracle happens. A person is filled with something we call, the church teaches this sanctifying grace. It's the habitual indwelling of the life of God within the soul. At confirmation, what happens is that this indwelling of the Holy Spirit is strengthened or deepened by my favorite stuff, chocolate quick. <laughs> And when, this, when the bishop says, be sealed with the Holy Spirit, something remarkable happens. And we like a lot of sweetening. <laughs> so here we have a soul that has been baptized, now confirmed. And you mentioned confirmation is a deepening of the indwelling of the Spirit in one's life. And something indeed happens. But if a person gets confirmed because they're supposed to be confirmed or because they're the next one in line, well then is the sacrament valid? The answer is yes. 
But has it, the effect of the sacrament been allowed to take hold of a person's life? Mm. Well, not really. What needs to happen is a stirring. And that stirring happens when we invite the presence of God in our life and say, Lord, I, I want to be the person you have called me to be. And when a person approaches God with this disposition, whether it be in the sacraments or even after the sacraments, then we invite the hand of God to stir within us the potential of the life that is he's already put it within us. And indeed, there is a change. And it's a good change. <laughs> life is better with the Holy Spirit. I think about your sharing and how you said there's something that happened with you. Mm -hmm. um, and there is a change that can happen within our lives when we invite the presence of God into our lives. And this is what you're doing. By participating in this novena, we are all together seeking the presence of God not just as a real uh, uh, academic pursuit, but we want to be changed by Him. Mm -hmm. We want our lives to be conformed to the will of God. And so we need the Holy Spirit to be able to do this because um, living the life that God has for us is actually impossible, humanly speaking. This is why we need supernatural grace mm -hmm. to utterly, completely transform our life. This would be considered also a person in the state of grace. So we have someone who has the sanctifying grace within their soul. But did you know that not all states of grace are equal? Meaning that one person can have more sanctifying grace within the soul than another person. For example, this would be a person, if we filled this up and took the analogy one step further, a person that had, has grown in their capacity or the indwelling of the Spirit in their life. So, for example, you might be thinking, well, that's kind of unfair. Why can have somebody have more sanctifying grace than another person? Think about our Blessed Mother. Scripture says she was full of grace. Does it not seem fitting that she would receive a deeper dwelling of the Holy Spirit uh, than, let's say, me? And I just, I just think that's fit, fitting and that is just. And this is why you see some of the saints doing remarkable things is because they had the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, sanctifying grace within the soul and in a greater degree than, mm -hmm. let's say, Ken Yazinski sitting on a couch in Saskatoon. Um, and this is really important to understand because it should set us in motion to seeking a greater degree of God's presence in our life and not just settling for the, the minimum. I'm in the state of grace. I'm good with the church. Check. No, God has something indeed wonderful for each one of us. Mm -hmm. um, do you have anything else to add, Janelle? Well, I was just thinking about the apostles, and if you think of the book of Acts, and, and it was once the Holy Spirit came on the scene that things changed dramatically for all of those people. And I just feel like that's what I want. Like, I don't want to be afraid. I don't want to be um, living just a regular life. Like, we are called to live an abundant life that is, like, empowered by the Holy Spirit. And the only way that we can be empowered is by allowing the Holy Spirit to come and be alive and active in our lives. And and like you were mentioning, like we don't have to remain like this. We can remain even more full. And God God has the ability to fill us completely as long as we are, remain docile and open to Him. So, so my encouragement to you mm. on day number one, it's a simple question. Have you ever asked to be stirred? Because this doesn't happen automatically. Indeed, a person get, can get confirmed simply because of the next in line. And if they do not have the understanding of personally welcoming the Spirit into their life, this is potentially what could happen. The sacrament is valid, but is not released. Some people would call it a bound sacrament. Mm -hmm. So this symbolizes one who's actively sought the Holy Spirit to seek God's, all, all the gifts and all the charisms and everything, the fullness of what God has. Big question though, are we aware of personally asking the Holy Spirit to be stirred within our life. Mm -hmm. This is so key as we go forward because now we're going to start talking in day beyond here on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. It's all dependent upon our are we willing? And the gifts will be increased or decreased depending, the strength of the gift is determined upon the amount of sanctifying grace we have in our soul. 
So that brings me to the question about confession. Mm. Because I feel like if we aren't in a state of grace, how can we come back to that state of grace? Oh, great question. So in, in terms of mortal sin, let's say, it would be the equivalent of dumping all of this male cult. So a serious sin, we know it's serious, we do it anyway, we, we dump this out. Now the soul is empty. Mortal sin completely removes mm -hmm. the presence of God from our soul. The only way back into friendship with him, the ordinary means, is by confession where we were restored to Christ and his church by having a good confession. And then we are indeed restored. And the, the next question would be then though is, how can we increase? How can we go from here to here? Mm -hmm. And that would be a continuous life of the sacraments. So like regular confession, participation, especially in the Holy Eucharist, um, a life of prayer, and also just fidelity. Fidelity to what we know we are supposed to do. So sacraments, a life of prayer, and fidelity to, to our, what we are supposed to do, following the promptings of the Spirit. And as we do this, the life of God is going to grow within our life, and then the gifts of the Spirit, which we'll get to, will be increasingly strengthened mm -hmm. in our life. And I feel like maybe some people might be saying, but, but we don't have access to the Mass. We don't have access to confession because of the state that the world is in right now. And the one thing that comes to my mind is, well, God is not bound by his sacraments, mm -hmm. that we can still make a spiritual communion. We can still receive, receive those graces as though we are receiving the Eucharist, um, though we are not present at the Mass. Um, but I would say, like, I would ask, how, have we contacted our parish? Have we asked if we can get to confession if we need to? Um, so I always think of this line, um, Ken's brother is a priest and he always says our first line of defense is a sacrament of confession. Mm -hmm. And so if you have not been to confession in a long time, that's a really great starting point. Mm -hmm. Yes. An honest confession transformed my life, my friends. I'd never been honest in the sacrament of confession until I was 18 years old. Uh, and when I did, I encountered the love of God in such a powerful way. And I'd have to say that was a moment of stirring within me because that stirring isn't a one-time experience. Mm -hmm. It's a constantly going to the Holy Spirit, a constantly seeking Him. Mm -hmm. uh, because realistically, if we just let this sit, maybe come back tomorrow, a lot of this will be just settled. Mm -hmm. So we need to constantly seek. You're seeking, you're a seeker. And the good news about that is what? Jesus said, those who seek will find. Mm -hmm. So, are we good? We're good. So now, let's seek so that we can find. Remember, Jesus promises those who seek will find. You're going to find what mm -hmm. you're looking for. So we're going to start with prayer. And we invite you to open up our, your hearts and just participate with the prayer that we've prepared at the end of this video. We'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Day 1. Almighty and eternal God, who has vouchsafed to regenerate us by water and the Holy Spirit and has given us forgiveness all sins, vouchsafe to send forth from heaven upon us your sevenfold spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and fortitude, the spirit of knowledge and piety, and fill us with the spirit of holy fear. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit.
as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Act of Consecration to the Holy Spirit on my knees before the great multitude of heavenly witnesses, I offer myself, soul and body to you, eternal Spirit of God. I adore the brightness of your purity, the unerring keenness of your justice, and the might of your love. You are the strength and light of my soul. In you I live and move and am. I desire never to grieve you by unfaithfulness to grace and I pray with all my heart to be kept from the smallest sin against you. Mercifully guard my every thought and grant that I may always watch for your light and listen to your voice and follow your gracious inspirations. I cling to you and give myself to you and ask you by your compassion to watch over me in my weakness. Holding the pierced feet of Jesus and looking at his five wounds, and trusting in his precious blood and adoring his open side and stricken heart, I implore you, adorable spirit, helper of my infirmity, to keep me in your grace, that I may never sin against you. Give me grace, O Holy Spirit, Spirit of the Father and the Son, to say to you always and everywhere, Speak, Lord, for your servant heareth. Amen. Prayer for the Seven Gifts of the Holy Spirit O Lord Jesus Christ, who before ascending into heaven did promise to send the Holy Spirit to finish your work in the souls of your apostles and disciples, dang to grant the same Holy Spirit to me that he may perfect in my soul the work of your grace and your love. Grant me the spirit of wisdom that I may despise the perishable things of this world and aspire only after the things that are eternal, the spirit of understanding, to enlighten my mind with the light of your divine truth, the spirit of counsel, that I may ever choose the surest way of pleasing God and gaining heaven, the spirit of fortitude, that I may bear my cross with you, and that I may overcome with courage all the obstacles that oppose my salvation, the spirit of knowledge, that I may know God and know myself and grow perfect in the science of the saints, the spirit of piety, that I may find the service of God sweet and amiable, and the spirit of fear, that I may be filled with a loving reverence towards God and may dread in any way to displease Him. Mark me, dear Lord, with the sign of your true disciples and animate me in all things with your spirit. Amen. Amen. 